Hello, everyone, and welcome to an Exivia webinar, delivering the information you need for the business future you want. We're sharing our knowledge to help your business thrive in today's new normal. My name is Alex Killian, and I'm the video producer here on Exivia's marketing team. And today you'll be hearing from some API experts. Before we dive in, uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about our company. For nearly three decades, we've been providing a variety of expert IT services to hundreds of businesses in countless industries. If you can imagine the business outcome, Xtivia can create it with technology. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Nir for our agenda this morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, my name is Nir Grin. I'm Senior Vice President here at Xtivia of uh, Sales. I've been with Xtivia for 20 years. Um, actually, June 1st was my anniversary, uh, all, all during this uh, crazy time that we're all uh, going through here. I uh, wanted to first say, uh, wish everybody a lot of health and success during this uh, time, and uh, we're here to help you, um, all our existing customers. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Anyone who we're not currently working with and is you know, here with us today, uh, thank you so much for joining as well. Um, we have been doing integration and application development here at Xtivia for over 20 years. Uh, we've worked with Software AG uh, in the early days with the Web Methods products. Um, more recently, Software AG has uh, come out with really state-of-the-art uh, cloud-based offerings, and uh, we have been really excited to partner together um, in the recent uh, times here uh, with that platform and um, have had a pleasure of working with Many of the executives of North America from Software AG, we have a very strong relationship all the way up from the leaders down to the street, uh, from, you know, sales, solution architects, professional services. So we have a very, very tight knit relationship with Software AG. Um, today, I have uh, two amazing gentlemen from Software AG joining me today. Uh, Mike Durham, um, had the pleasure of working with. He is uh, the director of pre-sales and uh, solution architecture uh, for North America. Uh, at Software AG. Uh, also, we have uh, Omid Jafari. And Omid, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for your service. Uh, is a uh, uh, one of our uh, military uh, gentlemen. So again, thank you very, very much. And um, Omid is a solution architect um, from uh, Software AG. Worked together in pre-sales as well as uh, working with customers to put together the right solutions, including the right architecture, and then assisting them with uh, post uh, go live support as well. So with that, um, again, thank you very much. I will just tell you our quick agenda for today. Um, we'll go through uh, who is Software AG, which is very important to understand. We'll go through some of our customers on a high level, won't go too deep. Uh, we'll talk about API management in general, what is API management, you know, why is it important, et cetera. And then obviously why Software AG? And then the most exciting part, which I always love, and I've seen it many times, and it's always exciting because I always learn something new. Um, and we will see a demo of the web methods portfolio. And uh, after that, we'll have some time for Q&A. So if uh, anyone is interested in asking questions, that'll be a great time. And uh, we look forward to answering those. So thank you so much. And with that, I will move this over to the Software AG team. Thank you very much, Nir, for, that, for, for the kind introduction. And I'm Mike Durham over here. and. I've been with uh, Software AG for 16 years, and I came over to the company from Web Methods. So the technology that we're going to talk about today is the foundation of the, of the, the, the solution platform, which we're going to be covering today, focusing on API management. But just a little bit about Software AG, one of the world's first software companies. And you know, born into data, creating the first massively scalable multi-distributed database running on you know many different platforms in the 60s and as we go through the presentation we'll talk about the you know you know the revenue that's associated with our global sales the investment in r d the investment in the technology and what we do to to quickly bring this technology to market and of course that you know we want to focus um on with with incredibly strong partner network that we have here in north america with extivia and my responsibility as, as the, you know, the director of, of, of technology for the partner um, team and the Alliance and Channels as well. It's incredibly important to, to work with, with, with Nir and his team to make sure that his customers understand what the possibilities are with this technology. And as you can see some other stats about the, you know, the company, the size of the company, 
the, the amount of developers that, that, that have been involved with our platform over the years. And then of course the cooperation with the universities put all over the globe is incredibly important that they understand, you know, you know the opinions of data integration and, um, and data management. Okay, so as we move through the presentation, what I wanted to do is to talk a little bit about how our customers use our technology to, to really unlock data. And so as you can see here is that value creation across any industry, across public sector, across uh, universities and across any type of marketplace is that the value creation starts by unlocking that data. And we're gonna cover that topic today as we get into the technology through APIs. And so we have silos of data and organizations integrate data today, but we're, gonna, we're going to talk about how our customers, and then as we get into the technology and the demonstration, have unlocked their data. And so once they unlock their data, they're able to get more of um, a view and they're able to get true insight into what they do with their business. And today, organizations do compete on narrow margins of insight. Having insight into their customers, having insight into their product roadmaps, insight into how their customers do business. And so that new normal has to um, occur and it has to be able to occur, occur quickly. And uh, a lot of that technology associated with intro the introduction of APIs and the API economy. So once organizations realize that they do compete on this insight, what they have to do now is they have to have the ability to focus. Right? And we're gonna introduce some terminology today is that we're referring to as the fully integrated enterprise because organizations, integration occurs, point-to-point -point integration occurs, data integration occurs today, document integration occurs, moving this, these, these assets around the organization. But in order for, for these companies that we work with to get true focus, to get the insight and to be able to get, to get that true value is we want to introduce what we refer to as this integrated enterprise. And so what we see in the market and, and what, we, what our customers have worked with us on is that we see these challenges as related to a fractured enterprise and fractured integration. Is that business, they, they struggle to get actionable insight from the customer data. And as we go through the tech, tech technology platform and talk about APIs, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss a bit about how customer data can be, we can remove the friction associated with that. And of course, the classic that, that IT can't keep up fast enough when it comes to customer requests and be able to serve those customers better. And then lastly, the struggle that we see or the challenges is that, you know, delivering new business models and new channels is it can, can be cumbersome and can take too long to be able to, you know, to drive that, you know, that business and then ultimately allow the customers of these organizations to get more value. And so a few enablers that, that, that we see in, in the market when it comes to integration and APIs is that operationalizing the data, where the data is, is, is most valuable. And as we get into the architecture, you'll be able to see the, the, the operationalizing aspect. And of course, increasing the efficiency and increasing revenue, which we'll show you how that's done a little bit in the platform. Liberate data. So once it's operationalized, we're gonna liberate through integration. And so that, you know, the way that, that, that you know, Extibia works with its clients and customers and the way that we work with, um, you know, R&D to introduce the ability to, to take the technology when it comes to integration, where it's closest to the data. And we'll talk about cloud, edge, and on-premise as we move along. And then, of course, transform the business to get new capabilities out to the market faster. And we believe, and what our customers have um, shared with us over the years, is, is API enablement and the API economy and then ultimately managing you know, the, those API enterprises um, is one way to do it. Okay, and so as we move along, we do in all aspects of business and in all aspects of our personal life, we live in an API connected world. The technology that we consume from a personal perspective and when it comes to entertainment, when it comes to efficiency, the devices that we have, and of course in business, how we interact with our partners today is really getting driven toward APIs. And I have a couple use cases at the, at the end of our presentation today to talk about how organizations are starting to adopt API-driven B2B and really looking to be able to take the investment to a new level 
And so we'll talk about that. And of course, the cloud apps, packaged apps, and big data is that, you know, the vast amount of data that, that we're sharing in a traditional sense, organizations are starting to really look at how do I manage and how do I potentially create new revenue channels and profit centers with the, these actual API um, examples here. Okay, so the development of APIs and the organization of APIs, this is what we see if you're not familiar with, with an end-to-end -end life cycle. We're gonna represent this um, through our methodology. And of course, when it comes to the, you know, the design methodology, the documentation, the specification associated with these APIs, this is primarily what we see. And we can demonstrate this in the technology, but there's, a, there's an important part of this, which is, the, which is the associated design definition and specification of the APIs that we and Extivia have expertise to be able to deliver to our customers. And as we move through the loop here, is that you'll be able to see is that once we get to the ability to prototype and publish those APIs, is that we can apply a life cycle and we can apply governance to those APIs to ensure that they're being tested properly, that the, the external developers or the partners, you know, they can, they can actually consume those APIs. As we get into the technology, we'll explain that a little bit, automate them, apply policies and associate those, and then be able to measure and analyze those APIs and ensure that, that, they're, that they're profitable and that they're being utilized. And then of course, as I mentioned previously, they're reducing the friction of passing data back and forth with those customers. And so one more, just one more point before we get into um, that, you know, I'm gonna pass it over to Omid um, here after this slide, is to talk about the investment that, that, that we have um, in the relationship with, with Forrester. As you can see in this example is that when it, when it came to um, the, the introduction of our latest version of the technology is that Software AG is the absolute leader. And it was, it's, we take a lot of pride, Omid and I, and our architect team is, is being involved um, behind the scenes um, and working with our, our, our product teams uh, to, you know, for, for, the, for the response um, to this, which is important to show as we go through the presentation is that the modular solution that we're going to show is starts with our API management, API portal and API gateway. And we can, we're really gonna focus in on the flexibility as we get into the demonstration to so see you can see the components. And so this, this to, to us is the excess, the success um, that, that our technology has just based on the view of Forrester. Um, and then what we're gonna do at the end of the presentation is we'll talk about success of our customers being able to implement our technology, become more productive. Okay, so at this point, let's get into the technology and talk about the Software AG platform. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Omid here. Thank you for that, Mike, and thank you for the introduction earlier. Again, my name is Omid Jafari, Solutions Architect here at Software AG. Um, to see how the analysts have ranked us, uh, it's really to dive into the products and understand you know, what value we can bring. So our API management platform can now uh, be deployed in the cloud, on-premise, and in a hybrid fashion. And it consists of the API portal, which you can engage your developer. So it's a portal where you can publish your APIs, where you can engage your and provide support for your developers. The API portal is where you can provide all capabilities to protect the access and to be able to monetize on the usage of the APIs. And finally, the micro gateway. We can now have the ability to really understand what architecture, what services we're pushing out and being able to manage that and being able to see what assets and dependencies are out there. So let's take a now a little deeper dive and understand you know, what the value comes and what these products really build together. So freeing your data uh, with that you know, managed, this allows us to properly document the APIs and all of its different aspects from retirement to, from requirement to retirement. Uh, then we support some of the largest standards of, of API standards. Uh, you know, we have Open API, we support RAML, Swagger, and you know, much more. And this is all based off of building the platform ourselves and then seeing what our customers use, what's being used in the world today. And being a technology leader, we have that foresight. We get to see what new technologies our customers are starting to take on and being able to apply that to our products. 
Uh, we have a single gateway. So this is to secure access across all of the data transactions. And what this means is being able to really define a single point of access where every request that comes in and out is passed through this gateway. We can monitor and see all the different responses and requests coming in and out. And in return, this really creates a really secure access. So you can apply different policies and access levels on who can access these APIs and what information they can get from those. And then being able to serve all this information really quickly by using our in-memory data caching abilities for low latency and high scale. So let's dive into the API portal now. Again, the API portal is a standalone product and it's where you can publish and promote your APIs, allow developers to come in and register and to explore your API, see what's available, see the documentation and all the supporting uh, assets that need to go along with that API. Also provide a really collaborative platform for API providers and consumers to communicate. So we have different chat features, different commenting, being able to follow uh, the APIs from, you know, from when it's first brought into as a beta to when it's in full production, you get to really see that maturity level over time uh, as you follow these APIs. And then really to build a good API ecosystem. So to have a good collaboration, developers that use it can then create applications and then reference those APIs that they used in those applications and to publish them for other developers to also be able to use. Now, before we can publish the API gateway, we have to really start defining the APIs themselves in our API gateway. Uh, in the gateway, you know, we have a very intuitive API design documentation. So it allows us to really define the APIs uh, as far as who can access the APIs, what type of load balancing you wanna apply, and just all other different types of rich analytics that come along with this. So we can see who's using the uh, APIs, how they're using it, and then to block any malicious actors. So being able to apply different threat protections to these APIs to really secure your backend infrastructure as well. Because again, the API gateway is gonna be the access point where the information is going to be traveling through. And then finally, the third component is gonna be our micro gateway. So when the, when the technology of microservices came out, it was such a new idea that people just wanted to, you know, quick and rapidly push out these different services without really thinking about the future state of these uh, architectures, the way we de uh, deploy these microservices. So with our micro gateway, we can now have your, uh, you can now have the ability to basically understand what assets are out there, what services are relying on other services, because in that earlier stage, when you deploy too many microservices, you start building this cluster of different services. All of them are going to be relying on each other. And what that creates is what we refer to as a death star. So with that, with that, if you bring down one service, you could be bringing down multiple other services. So we really give you that control and visibility into what you're deploying. So with all of these different products, who best is this position for? Like who, what industries would be best to use our API man management platform? Well, the answer is all of them. And these are just some examples where we have our footprints. Uh, being a technology leader, again, we get to see so many different technologies that our customers are using. We get to really understand the different uh, areas that they're in, the different sectors, the industries that they're in. So uh, with that, you know, we have great expertise and a lot of different customers in banking, to retail and utilities. So why would all of our customers across all these industries choose software AG? Well, there's multiple reasons. Uh, the one Mike already covered, again, we're ranked as one of the leaders by Forrester and all the other analysts that uh, have rated software AG in the past. Uh, we co-innovate with our customers. So this is another integral part to developing the right product for the right users and, and companies like yours out there. If there's something where it could, where a product may lack, we work with you to develop that. You can take some of the parts of our platform that are very strong and kind of tailor it to your way. And, and the next slide, we'll get to see some of the different customers that we have. But and in a sense, again, the API management, API management platform itself is a very high secure platform. Again, being able to apply different threat protection policies, who can access these, um, these APIs, as well as keeping the life cycle from requirement to retirement. 
And then again, the microservices being able to see all the assets and dependencies. And then the third, and I think is one of the most important as well, is the integration, being able to uh, create these APIs and have the access points to all your backend systems, and then being able to take that and then create it as an API and then present it through the API management platform. That's really a, a place where we're a leader in and where we work with other customers. Uh, you'll get to see in our demo how we can help you develop the APIs from requirement to retirement. And if we take a look at some of the other customers we have, I'll pass this over to Mike again to really elaborate a little bit more on how we bring the value to these different customers. Absolutely. And so the, the, the focus on the customer in the, in the view here is to be able to open up new channels and to be able to serve their customer bases and, and create more value for their customers through the technology. And so the examples of implementing APIs and understanding the management and lifecycle side is very, very similar when it comes to the technology itself. But the marketplaces and how they're creating the marketplaces and they're all creating new channels and associating that with, you know, from, from a, uh, insurance perspective, a retail perspective, and so forth. And so one example down on the right-hand side that I mentioned previously is, is the Michael Kors implementation, is to create new channels and to understand how they can be more profitable by introducing new channels very, very quickly when it comes to consumers, when it comes to their wholesale channels, when it comes to their, resale, their retail channels, and then really the most important is their luxury channels. And to be able to, to do true B2B using APIs. And it was, it was incredibly necessary for them to look at, you know, a variety of technologies from a variety of different vendors and focused in on what web methods was able to do from them. What web methods was able to do from them from an integration standpoint, from a messaging standpoint, and then ultimately the, the, the API is what took them to the next level and drove that consumer and business side of communications um, to a new level. And a couple other ones that are on here, I think Lego is interesting because the Lego app is just awesome. If you've ever seen the Lego app and understand the Lego app, there is a massive amount of API traffic when you're using that application. And, and of course, the API gateway, which we're gonna show you here in a moment, and the API developer portal for folks that are doing business um, you know, with Lego, you can see the example of that through the public facing portal. And then of Carnival, just think of Carnival, and you know in in the day is being just floating data centers and the importance of of that type of business and each one of those floating data centers being api enabled because real-time communication is incredibly important when that ship is not at shore ship to shore communication using api was an, enabled them to make really good fast decisions and get more insight as i mentioned earlier about what those customers are actually doing when they're on the boat in order for them to generate revenue and just a couple other ones here is that what 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 Nir and I, when we were speaking earlier about these customers, is that um, as you can see this next slide, is that these customers really run their businesses um, on this web methods platform. As you can see on the left hand side, is every person that's processed that tech, you know, that data about those folks go through the API management and through the web methods technology. Of course, Morgan Stanley, a software AG uh, customer for, for, for decades, using the web methods integration as well, every stock or bond running through that platform. And of course, we've all shopped at Lowe's, understanding what they, you know, the necessity of making sure that you know what you're going to get when you're online, when you're in the store, when you're at a kiosk, or if you're working with, you know, the contracting folks that are in there, the installing folks that are in there, the folks that do their lawn and garden, and the B2B side was incredibly important for them to look at, you know, integration and of course APIs as well. And then lastly is Bank of America. And so I think what we wanted to do here um, is to talk about the variety of customers using APIs, um, and then really talk about, you know, when failure is not an option is that, you know, these, these companies that were, that we just use a few examples here that are truly betting their business on the web methods platform. Thank so you. before we jump into our demo this morning, we've got a quick poll question for you. Uh, you should be seeing it on screen now. Are you currently using or currently considering an API management solution? Uh, yes, within the next three to six months, six months and beyond or not currently looking. So let us know. We love to get this um, information in about who's watching and kind of gauge where you guys are at. Okay, and it looks like 100% uh, looking for considering an API management solution within the next three to six months. 
So that's good to hear. All right, now to the demo portion. All right, so let's begin. So Software AG Cloud, let's, uh, when you first log into our Software AG Cloud, you get presented with all of our different products and our different platforms that are available. Um, you know, some of the areas where, again, we're a leader in and have been rated very highly is our Cumulosity platform. This is our IoT and analytics platform. We also have our webmethods.io B2B platform. So this is, think of companies when they need to exchange documents with each other, EDI documents, being able to pass these documents back and forth and then processing them as they come in. That's what our B2B platform is capable of. And then we have our API management platform, which consists of our API gateway and API portal again. And then everything kind of loosely being coupled together uh, and powered by our integration platform. So I will use our app switcher now and navigate to our integration platform. Uh, the concept in the demo that I'm going to show today is going to be building a demo, uh, a workflow, and then taking that workflow, exporting it out as a, as a API, applying different policies and rules through the API gateway, publishing it out to our portal, and then end users being able to consume them. When we first come into our integration platform, we get presented with our projects page. So we get to define the different types of projects we're working on. As you can see, I break my projects out in different um, SaaS applications that I may be using, like Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics. So drilling down into one of these folders, you can really start to create multiple workflows. And the one we're gonna reference today is this SAP to Salesforce. So commonly when we get customers coming to us, they have little issues. Uh, they could be from the IT department saying, hey, we get you know, so many requests for all these little um, workflows that people want and we have no way of really supporting it because we don't have as many developers. We don't have the time and resources to make all these little changes, but they're getting mandated down from top down to the bottom. So we're looking for a platform. And that's where Software AG's integration platform can really come in to play here. Um, what you're seeing right now is our canvas. In our canvas, we get to really paint our picture with our workflows. In this case, we're using a, what we call a webhook. So we use a webhook and it can be implemented within applications and it sends a payload of data to the platform. And then from the platform, we then map and process this data around. This SAP adapter you're seeing, this is actually considered a hybrid workflow right here, a deployment in a hybrid fashion where this SAP EC6 system is actually sitting on-prem and I've created a service and deployed that service to our cloud portal now where you can see this adapter here. When we come in here, we're passing the data from the query parameter from the webhook into the uh, processing connector. So this will be our SAP adapter. As, as you can see here, we're passing a customer number and we can test this out. We can see that it's gonna generate back a list of customer information. So it's gonna be where the customer is located, the telephone number, all that good information. Now we're gonna create a customer account in Salesforce using all that SAP data. So this could be to sync different accounts. If you have customer accounts in SAP and you wanna sync it with their Salesforce account, this is an easy way to do so. Again, using our mapping tool, we take the results from the SAP customer information, and then we map it to the appropriate fields within the Salesforce account creation fields. And then we can test this out, make sure it works, and uh, we can then return the information, a successful message to the requesting uh, service or application. Now, once we create this uh, workflow, what I would like to show you now is how we can easily export it out as an API. So coming out, we can go to the APIs tab. And from here, we can create either a REST or a SOAP API. For this case, I would like to create a REST API. So I will click, we will click that, and then we will create it from scratch. You will then give it a name. So we'll call this SAP to salesforce.com and give it a version. So we'll call this version 1.0 and a brief description, take SAP customer information and create new accounts in salesforce.com. And then we will hit save. So this is gonna generate basically the endpoint for the API, but we still need to add some resources and methods to it. So we can add this 
And we will give this a path. So we'll call this create because it will be creating a new entry inside of Salesforce. And this will be a post. And now, again, you can give it another brief description, but the main important part here is addressing the appropriate workflow to this. So as you can see, I have my SAP and Salesforce workflow available because I'm using an API endpoint. So I can select that and then this will auto populate all the parameters and all the responses, uh, whether it's successful or access denied. You can even add more responses based on different status codes that, that would be rendered back to the developers. And then uh, we get to see our query parameters and then add a little description. So this will be SAP customer number. And what we will do is just click done and save all of this. Now, if we go back to our API details, we can then see you know, the API name, when it was created, who created it, and then the endpoint for this. So we can actually copy this, add the extension at the end, and then be able to call this API. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually download this JSON, this file, this Swagger file here. So I'll download this, and then using our app switcher, I'm going to now navigate over to our API gateway. So switching over to our API gateway, again, the gateway is where you get to come in and really define your APIs, create the APIs, apply policies, and different uh, other routing and load balancing and access tokens. Uh, really just the possibilities are kind of endless in here, and we'll show you how you can do all this. When we come to the APIs section, this is where all of our APIs are housed. We can search via or if they're all REST APIs, if they're SOAP, uh, if they're active or inactive, we can also search for any of these uh, APIs here. Uh, what we have next is the policies tab. So again, this is where we can de um, define our global policy rules. So uh, as far as threat protection, I'm putting a DDoS filter on here. So I'm saying if it's more than three requests in a 10 second interval, we're going to block um, the person making the request or the application making the request and then give a little you know, custom message. And in this case, I'm gonna tell them to slow your horses down a little bit. If it's an application where we know is gonna be making you know, multiple you know, hundreds of requests in those small interval time ranges, we can then whitelist, whitelist those IP addresses and those IPs will just be able to pass through this filter and proceed with making requests. We also have global policies that are addressed to all of the APIs as well as different policy templates. So if certain policies, uh, certain APIs need to act a certain way, you can create different policies and address that within the scope of the API as well. The next piece is applications. So being able to take different applications using multiple APIs and then creating this and then being able to expose this to your user, your uh, end users or your developers. And then in the same case, your developers can also create applications and be able to uh, define what APIs they use. We can also define different packages. So this gets into the realm of monetization a little bit. So we can create what we call a package, right? Uh, the package will consist of, you know, one or many APIs, and then you can associate plans with it. In our case, I have a free plan, a gold plan, silver, and a bronze tier plan. So these will all be tiered differently. So based on usage. So the free tier might allow just a certain amount while the gold may be unlimited access. So these are different components of the API gateway. Now what we're gonna do is kind of get into the, the real meat and potatoes of it and we're gonna create an API using the workflow that we had created earlier. So we'll browse for the file and I will go to our downloads. Scroll down, we see we have this SAP Salesforce Pull this up and then we will give this a name. So we would call this um, create new, uh, create salesforce.com account and we'll call this version 1.0. A brief description again, take SAP customer number and create new accounts in salesforce.com. And then we will hit create. So uh, what's happening here is it's taking that, that JSON file, that Swagger document, and it's really pre-filling all the information we need 
uh, for this API. It's taking all the technical information, it's defining the endpoint associated, it's taking all the resources that we identified earlier uh, when we created the path, as well as identify the query parameters that need to come with it and the responses. Um, from here, we can then activate this or create a new version. I will go ahead and hit activate, hit yes, and now we will see a gateway endpoint. So this gateway endpoint is what the developers or the end users will be using to access this API. And this can be customized. We can create a different alias for this endpoint, a little bit more to suit your organization. But really, it's just to reroute all the traffic to our gateway. Uh, getting a little bit more deep into it, uh, again, I, I talked about the scopes. That's where you can apply different policy templates. But this is where we really get to define the API. In here, hit yes, we get to define our threat protection. So we see all the threat protection rules being applied. Again, this is the DDoS rule I've configured already. We have transport. So what type of protocols do we accept? HTTP or HTTPS? If you want just secure, you can just leave the HTTPS on. Uh, we have identity and access. So if you add this, you just hit the plus sign. And now you can really define, do you want people to be able to access this based on API keys that you authenticate? Do you have a certain authentication server? Um, and or do you want to use just basic authentication? So you can really define how people can access this API. And then being able to uh, process the request, monitor everything uh, can really be defined right here in this single page. Next, we have mashups that allows this single API to call other APIs so you can define the route that it takes. Uh, once we actually use this API and define it and use it in different applications, we can see the different type of applications that it is currently a part of. And then last but not least, we can also see the analytics. Having not used this or deployed this yet to the gate, uh, to the portal, we, we're not going to have any analytics generated. So why don't we go ahead and start doing that and seeing how we can start seeing some good analytics behind this. So uh, create, this is the new API that we have just published. We can see that it's active. And now what we will do is actually publish this. So we will hit this cloud button to publish this to our API portal. Now in your portal, if you have different personas or different user groups that you have, you can kind of select them from the communities list here. You know, I have a food group and I have a public community, but you can really break it down to whatever groups you feel like your developers are part of. Do you have internal groups? Do you have just public groups or do you have partners? So you can kind of build these APIs out tailored to those different types of communities. But in this case, we will publish this one to our public community and we will get a successful or a denied message once it has been published or if it has failed being published. In our case, it has published successfully, so we got the check mark. Uh, if we want to unpublish this, take this off of the API portal, again, we can hit the unpublish, and then we have the option to delete this or make this inactive. But seeing how we were able to successfully push this to our portal, now we will transition to our API portal. So this is the landing page when you first come to our API portal. And again, this portal can be very customized to your look and feel. And I will show you guys an example at the end of this of a customer currently using our API portal. But in our API portal, if we go to our API gallery, this is where we can see all of the available APIs that we have published. So your developers can come in here, really get a good view of what APIs are available at what stage um, and maturity these APIs are in. So you can really also define that and that's to really allow your developers to understand is this a new API or is this a production ready API. They can also search for these by simply just using the search. So let's say I wanted to search for my Salesforce API. We can see all the available APIs or if there's any other uh, matches for Salesforce. So in our case, we see this create Salesforce um, API available, it's a beta, and then we can actually view the details now. So when we come in, this allows developers again to see the documentation, see what resources are, are uh, needed for this API. The developers or end users can also rate this API. How did they like it? Was it good? Was it bad? Um, did they have any additional posts they would like to write about? So they can really comment on here and say what worked for them or what didn't. And then having that flexibility to even then try and test out this API 
right here on the platform itself. Now, by default, and web methods when you export the API will have to add basic authentication. So I'll update this to add that. And then now we will take our SAP number. So this is going to be a custom SAP number. So, so I'm taking this SAP number and now we're going to make a, so we will trigger this and now we should get our results back. You see that we, uh, we have our Nelson and Tax Associates that are located in Philadelphia. So we know this works and we got a 200. So everything was working, this API executed. I can see again, the response that was brought back to me. And then if I would like to take this API now and take it to our app gallery and create an application myself, I can then do that. And then this is where your users can come in and tie this API to an application. So if we take a look at one of our example, uh, applications that a user has created. We can see that they, uh, they can talk about the features of this, they can see when it was created, as well as the, the supporting APIs that were associated. And then being able to add sc different screenshots in, and then having the comment section for collaboration. Uh, being able to tag, add links, different files, we allow that flexibility as well. Uh, and finally, the, the piece I want to talk about is the monetization piece. So I have an a, a API, a package that we defined in the gateway and that we published out here. So if we look at the details, uh, remember I said we can create a package and tie different plans to it. Well, this is where we can really come in and see, you know, the different tiers, the cost associated, the amount of requests you can make. As you can see, the free tier has limited amount of requests. Um, and then we go to the bronze, which costs a little bit more, but you get some more requests. Silver, again, increasing in price, but increasing in the amount of requests you can make. And then finally having your gold package. And everything can be customized. Again, you don't have to really develop or code any of this. It's all just defined using our interfaces. So uh, now that we saw, again, we tested the API out, I actually wanna go in and show you guys how we can test and uh, verify that the security aspects of it are working. Uh, so again, let me retest this using my authorization. Again, make a send call, we see that everything works. But remember, I had a limit where if I make more than three requests, uh, this was a bad request, take one of these out, send, but if we make multiple requests, this is called dosing us. So we can see that, you know, that gateway is not letting us go through anymore. It's blocking us. Why? Because we're reaching a security uh, of our DDoS protection. So from here, we can then go back now to our API gateway. Again, we can, from the APIs page, go to our analytics, and this will drill down specifically on this specific API's analytics. So when this loads, we can see how many times the API was triggered, who triggered it, what were the responses, what were the errors associated. So we can kind of see this, we see we uh, triggered this five times and then drilling down into the details, we can see there was an error here. So we can drill down and see what the errors were, native source provider error code, uh, and then not only can you drill down on the API itself, you can even globally across all of your APIs go to our analytics page and see a summary of, you know, all of the APIs in the last 60 days that we use, for example, and we can apply this filter. And then we can get a really good view of all of the APIs that have been used as, as well as some performance data. We, we, you know, periodically we'll do performance tests to make sure the APIs are working and that they're up. And then we can also drill down into any of the threat protections. So some of the DDoS protections that we just triggered, we can view those here. Uh, and I have to actually drill this down into the past you know, seven days, apply this filter. And then we can see who was triggering these DDoS um, and have any created generated here, but Again, this is a good summary analytics page, see what packages are being used, what uh, threat protections and, you know, overall API usage on the platform. Uh, and I promised to show you guys an example of a customer currently using our API management platform. So we'll come to UPS. Uh, as you can see, looks very familiar, but 
they have added their customization, their logo, their brand. And then if we go to the UPS at API gallery, we can see again, all their available uh, APIs. Now, if I wanted to use one of these, again, they have different access policies. So if I came in here and tried to try out this API, I'll get a message here saying this endpoint is protected and that I need to obtain a token. So if I would like to uh, obtain a token, again, I would have to re request that through this uh, API portal and register an account and then make a request. So without further ado, that is a quick summarization just to recap what we have covered today. Uh, coming back to our cloud portal. Uh, again, we created a service, a workflow within the integration platform. We were able to then export that workflow out as an API, and then we applied it to our API gateway. Within our API gateway, we applied different policies, threat protection, and then we published that to our API portal where our end users can now come in and access and use the APIs. And this is uh, concluded of the demo portion. So I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and pass it back to the Extivio team. Awesome, thank you so much, Omid. Um, from here, we've got another poll question for you guys. So what are your biggest pain points in managing your APIs? And you can select as many of these as apply. Um, unable to monetize APIs, issues with governance, driving usage and adoption looking to increase speed to market, policy management, and security improvements. So these are some common things we know people run into with their APIs. Uh, just give us a sense of what you and your company are dealing with here. Okay, so looks like um, across the board, uh, we've got these issues happening for people. Uh, about 50% of our audience unable to monetize, 50% issues with governance, uh, quite a few driving usage and adoption, and also with policy management and security improvements. So um, that's some good info for us. And with that, we will move on to our Q&A section. Um, it looks like we have gotten a few questions in already, so I will read these out and whoever wants to jump in. Um, first of all, does the solution handle connecting to internal on-prem APIs as well as SaaS APIs? So I'll go ahead and start there is that the, the solution can be deployed on premise, private data center, in the cloud, on the edge, or a combination of those which are referred to as our hybrid implementation, hybrid solution. So absolutely, a lot of our larger customers, as they're migrating their technologies into the cloud, are, are running our technology on premise, and they do have the ability to protect and mediate and, and API enable those backend applications. So absolutely, yes. Okay, excellent. Um, our next question here, is the solution scalable from a cost and transaction level? So scalable, yes. And so our, our customers will, will adopt the technology to address the, the, the most valuable you know, you know, process and really take you know, and, and be able to get the fastest time to value. Whether that fastest time to value is to start the implementation in the cloud, start the implementation on premise, create that hybrid, hybrid view, and to be able to deploy the technology at the appropriate time to value and to be able to, to, to massively scale the technology. And some of the examples that I had given um, as customer success with web methods um, are, are really some are departmental, some are uh, enterprise, and then, and then some are completely global. And I that's a great answer. And I would just like to add to that and say that, you know, in my time working together with Software AG on, you know, different opportunities and with different customers, what I've seen is, you know, the, the maturity level in organizations is, you know, all over the map from organizations that, you know, may have tools in place to help them with API um, development and management, integration, and all that. Others do not have them in place. Um, many develop, you know, custom code and manage it in traditional ways. So what I would say is like, from a scalability perspective, absolutely this thing can scale to the largest companies in the world. But I also wanna say that, you know, you can get into this product for a very low uh, barrier to entry, where if you're looking at building out, for example, you know, my experience in application development, let's say you're looking to build out a new application and traditionally you'll do point to point integrations for that application with some, you know, one, two or more backend systems. Well, I would challenge anyone doing that to say, hey, you know what? 
this is an opportunity to really up the game and bring us into a technology suite that, you know, brings the best practices and, you know, really a, um, a governance approach to all this in a way that, you know, you're creating a reusable component, a reusable um, methodology. And instead of just building an application and doing it point to point like you normally would do it, I would say, look, if you um, bring in the integration.io, web methods integration.io, and the API management suite, and you kind of see what OMID did today in a very high level. I mean, you know, one thing I would say is when we do demos, there's a lot more to go into, but on a high level, if you go from the integration piece and you see how we built out a workflow for connecting to internal systems, that gets deployed up as a connector. Um, you know, you can basically build out the mapping on the canvas instantaneously put it through the API gateway, build all your policies, do everything you need there, and then deploy it out to a policy. That entire end-to-end -end solution is the value proposition that Software AG brings to the table is that in one unified platform that you can basically get into very quickly because it's cloud-based, you basically purchase the software and instantaneously we give you access to the environments. And um, I think it's very powerful. And even one other thing I would say is that even just trying the software, you know, we have um, on the integration.io piece that you saw in the beginning, we have a, uh, you know, free version for that to basically let people play with it and try it and see how it works, as well as the API management piece as well. So what I'm saying here is if there's an opportunity for someone to start something new and not go for a big bang effect and spend a ton of money and get an enterprise wide uh, tool selection, they can leverage this platform for a small departmental project or a particular application try this out, use it, and see how it all works and not have to go for a big bang, you know, large investment. It could be a small project, the cost is low, and the technology is state of the art. So I just wanna be clear that this is not only for the lows of the world, this is for organizations small to large um, who are looking to really advance the way they're dealing with um, integration and API management. Awesome. Well, our last question we got in here, you actually addressed uh, just there. Is there a free trial available? Um, sounds like, yes, there definitely is. Um, I think that's all we have time for this morning. So uh, that's going to wrap up our webinar. Thank you, Mike and Omid, so much for joining us. We appreciate all that information so much. And thank you, Nir, for being here also. Thank you. And thank you all for having us today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day, everybody.